is my uh, <clears throat> second print job. So if you look at here, that's my first one of the dice. Uh, the size came up pretty good, but um, there are a lot of things I saw that I had to fix up. So mainly it's um, tightening everything up and changing the temperature of the heater, the extruder, then leveling the bed. So, um, and the, the original dice was kind of, I, I only did like 50% of the size of the original model. It's like the, this is the bottom, but the top here didn't really get much of an infill. It's like, it's not flat. So, um, I think that might be the, the top plane wasn't, was too thin for it to render. And the bottom didn't render that well because the the bed was so low compared to the uh, extrusion head. So I got a piece of paper and put it on top of the bed and start leveling out, moving the, the extruder around to adjust things. So this is going to take about 17 minutes to print the dice, and uh, then I might have something to bring with me to game that, that looks a little bit better than this guy. <laughs> I mean, look at that. He, he actually looks pretty good for a first print. I mean, you can see the holes just fine. So, let's see. The, the edges on two sides are, um, I think it was the sixth I could see it the most. You see how there's a wavy pattern on the edge there? I mean, it's not a straight up and down. It's curved a little. So basically what happened was this guy, as, um, as he moved here, well the back would move a little bit before this guy in the middle would actually move over. So it's mainly tightening up the two screws in the back, tightening up this screw here, and then I did the same for over here and, and the other guy. But I also took this guy and pushed the plastic rods all the way to the edge of that pipe and then tighten it down to give it a more um, better support. So, and this time I changed the info a little to like a rectangle thing so I can sell the honeycomb. I like the honeycomb but I, I don't know what the different kinds are so I figured I'd try it out. I was wondering if there was like a hollow one. But, Apparently not. So, fun stuff. You can see originally I had um, had the print head too close to the printing plate, the hot end, and it started actually carving into the plate. And the lighting was in such a way I thought maybe it was laying down a um, very thin layer of translucent plastic. And it's, it's my first time I've ever seen this actually work. But, um, yeah, I kind of ruined the bed. Um, a lot of people, well, and, and I was starting to ruin the printer head as well. And that led into a lot of problems with trying to get it to extrude stuff. And a lot of people use, like, Kaplan tape or something, the blue 3M tape on their print bed so you can take things off easier. I'm just printing directly on the thing. This is so wild to me. I, it's like I can like make little toys and stuff out of it. And there's like um, three printable games that I want to start printing out and playing. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe I can make my own games. What do you think of that? So here's the um, the plastic. Yes, I believe it's a kilogram of plastic back here. Um, this was made by the, the people who made the, the Makiba as well. And it's not always a good quality here. I don't know if you can see, like, in the back here. See that big, big uh, wad of plastic there? On that edge? That's not good. So, when that comes around, I'm going to have to re-thread all the plastic. So it doesn't, um... 
get caught up in the, the tube. So, not a good thing to look forward to. Um, they made their own... The printer I originally ordered was actually heated uh, Mackie box. But you see all this empty area here? The, the inside here? This is where the Raymond extruder was going to go. So you could actually put your pellets, or any plastic really, in the top. And there was like an extruder piece that would be down here that would heat up those pellets and then extrude the uh, plastic filament so you can make your own reels like that. And the, the pellets are very cheap. But I have no idea what the quality would be like when that kind of plastic. Um, good news for me is I live across the street from a micro center and they've got like a ton of filament that they sell for 3D printers now. That they uh, sell maker bots. Look, look at that. It's like so wild. And the bigger size helps uh, a lot more of the details pop out on the camera. Look at that. That's awesome. I cannot wait. So, how, how long do I have left? So I get to watch all the G code go here. So it's printing layer 18 of 38. It's got about nine minutes remaining before it's done. And here's the little model. Let me see if I can get to a view that shows where it's at. So that this is all the paths that, that it actually takes. It works out where the printer is gonna go. And the light blue is like where it the the times that it does not extrude. And the, the ring around that, the dice is like uh, trying to get your uh, filament set up. So you can see I, I don't have it fully around the dice. It was still melting it and coming out. So that that's why you need that. And they, they keep it a good distance away so that nothing goes into it. I am still amazed. I mean, this this print is also much much better than my first. Where are the edges? Yeah, the edges look okay. I mean, they could definitely be better, but they look better than the first print. That that's the main thing. I want to see progress. That I'm actually doing things a bit better. That's awesome. So, let me see if I can get to, what kind of views do I have? So this is the temperature of my hot end to make sure that the plastic comes out. So, so average temperature in this extruder. Okay. Uh, 3D view, view, Let's see, fit printer, fit objects, show edges, config, uh, temperature. I know there's ways to view what level it's at right now, or at least I think there is. I don't know. That'd be so cool if I could see it. Show filament? No. Yeah, that, that light yellow, that light cyan blue, that's the travel paths there. Where, oh where? Config, view, isometric, show edges. That's not helping me at all. Tools? Maybe it was Ponter face I was looking at that stuff. That's temperature. Mainly, I'd like to see what the individual layer that's printing out and sending to the computer or to the printer. Look at that. It's it's more than halfway done now. Hmm. It's kind of a big dice. 
So like I need somewhere between half the size and three quarters of the size. This is three quarters of the original model. And you know, the the filament you gotta really think of volume here. So if you have a model that's like uh, what one cubic centimeter, if you change that model to be 50% of its original size, you're only using like an eighth of plastic than the cubic centimeter version. Um, there's a bit bit of differences based on your infill, because your, your sides are pretty much totally solid and your infill doesn't use as much, and the infill is this weird weavy pattern in there. You can see the, the diagonal lines. That's awesome. I can't wait to roll it. This guy, I seem to roll it, he comes up on threes a lot, so I'll just say, no! Where is it? So I'll get a hard surface here. And what is it? Oh, it's one. And that's what five. Five again. This is proving me wrong. It's the same one again. Wow, that's four in a row. Or no, that's the other side. It's like the top and the bottoms didn't really print out that well. So, so that's the top. That's the bottom. Every other side you can clearly see the holes. You just can't see it on the top and bottom. So that's a three. Uh, well, I can see it clearly there. Three, six, four, one. And you can kind of see two up here. It's probably very hard on the camera. I mean, I can't make it out on the camera. And there's, you can see four but of the holes on the corners, but there's one in the middle there. So, let's see how this is doing. Oh man, that's almost done. It's already working on the top corners. It's awesome. I think the other problem was when, when I picked this up, it was still a little warm um, and pliable. So I don't know if I actually touched it, because it, it really fits well in my fingers for grabbing. But, um, you know, I won't, I won't really know. Uh, you can see, like, the, the original dice model is that big. And I had problems with poker faces that kept coming out to the edge of my printer bed, and only printing part of the model when I told it what my actual printer bed size was. So this is, um, what is it, Repetier? So Repetier was able to figure out what I had and was able to place things in the middle as well. And um, I also have a doodle bot that I'm going to try and hook up to this over the weekend so I can use my um, iPhone or iPad to make doodles and then send them directly to the printer over Wi-Fi. Uh, that's, I can't I can't say how excited I am about this. Ah uh, no 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 no! Do you see what happened? Nothing's coming out. There's no ink. There's no. No, this is not good. So here's the problem I keep having when I was first setting this up. So see this um, plastic here. It's probably hard to see, but the motor tends to grab at it and not be able to push it through. And once that happens, it, it can't push anything else through. I don't know if maybe the, the extruder is not hot enough, maybe? 